Hey guys, Kurt Smith here again. Uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about fishing for smallmouth in the winter time. Um, and it's a surprisingly good species to go after, even though they're black bass and the water can be really cold. Um, to go chase them in the winter time because they're a little bit more active than other fish and they will take a lure and at least when you hook them they'll, they'll fight. So you get a lot of, you know, for me it's about the fight man. If, I'm, if the fish are wet socking it in, that is much fun. So smallmouth is something that you can uh, target in the winter time and have a really good time doing it. And I just want to go over some of the stuff that you want to do. So the first thing is, is how to locate them because they're not in the typical spots that you find them in the, in the springtime or the fall that you know they pull back to these deeper holes and you know some fish will travel miles to do this and, and other fish won't you know so a lot of times if you go down a stretch of a creek or a river that's like eight seven feet deep and then you find a, a tw the one twelve or fourteen foot spot in there for, and it's in like two or three miles, there'll be fish in there a lot of times. And it's really important to use electronics to do this. And I'll put up a picture here that shows you exactly what they look like, you know. Um, they're basically going to be normally close to the bottom. They're going to be maybe two or three stacked up on top of each other or just stuck all the way on the bottom depending on how active they are that day. And when you when you find that spot, you know it's not going to be take three casts and you catch them or you don't and move on. It's like you're going to have to work them and figure out what they want. Because after you locate them, you got to figure out what they want to eat, right? And or what they'll react to. And it's going to be one of the two ways there. And the smallmouth are still active in the winter time, even at like 37 degree water. You'll still they'll, they'll they slow way down but they're still active. Like if you fish the same stretch over and over, you'll actually see a move up shallower out of the deep hole and you'll kind of see small groups moving around together real slow and they're just kind of foraging for uh, some easy meals. Because they don't want to work real hard in the winter time, so they're looking for those easy meals. So sometimes they'll be moved out of that hole a little bit and be a little more active, especially on a sunny day, on a day that maybe was at the end of a warm up that you had like two or three days where it warmed up a little bit and the temperature bumped up a couple degrees, that will help them get them to move. So that's something else to consider that they're not always going to be in the deepest hole, but that's the best place to start for them. And they'll usually be pretty close to that. So let's talk about the size of the bait. This is really important. You really, really got to downsize, you know. When I say downsize, I mean like Ned Rig size. You really gotta go small um, and to get the most productive bites. Um, unless it's unless you're finding some kind of crazy reaction bite, which I've never found this time of year. I find a reaction bite that's never crazy. You know, it's never where you want to throw the biggest bait and rip it. It's really about throwing the smaller baits, the ones that the fish think are easy meals that they can just suck them up and swim away and they had their meal for the next two three days because metabolism is slow and they don't even really want to eat anything big because their metabolism is slow um you know and when i say downsize the bait you know it's like a ned rig there there's all different options on what you do and like one of my favorite things to do is texas rig and on this latest trip out we got into the smallies pretty good, you know, it was like 21 for the day. It was a good day, it was a good day. Uh, for, for a winter trip, the 21 smallies, a bunch of them over 17, so it was a great day in the water, but it was so specific on the bait that we used, and what it ended up being was, it was a Texas rig, but it wasn't like downsizing the weight, because they were on the bottom, they wanted a downsized bait, so it was still a quarter ounce for me, but I went to uh, a one-aught hook, on it and cut down a big TRD because I didn't bring any TRDs. I cut a big TRD in half and was using that. So it was a very, very small uh, profile bait. And not only that, it had to be the right color. And the right color ended up being copper truce. You know? And I normally throw the deal a lot or a green pumpkin. And neither one of those were, were making it happen. So to make it happen, it had to be that color. So they were so specific on 
the size, the color. I mean, so in the winter time they key in, and that's what took about half the day to figure out. And then it always does is what they're keying in on, you know, because you'll get a bite, and then it, it's like one clue to help you put it all together to go from the size to the weight to the color to the direction and, and odd as it was this last trip out the direction that they wanted it in was against the current and it was a very slow drag they didn't want it paused they wanted a slow drag and I say a slow drag it was about a half mile an hour and it was against current and honestly because of how the bite was and what I was doing was as I was turning around backwards I'd cast way out and then I would just pedal backwards really, really, really slow so I could get that good hook set because they weren't hanging on to it long. And this comes back to the size of the hook that you want to use. And using a thin wire hook really helps here because sometimes they don't even know that they've been hooked with those thin wire hooks because they're so thin and sharp. Um, and that's what I use. It was a thin wire hook. And, and that, that, it helps dramatically in the winter time to get those extra, extra bites. And so going backwards was allowing me to get the being a little bit quicker on the hook set and getting a little bit better hook set which helped my numbers go up because they were biting it just they weren't biting really aggressively you know because sometimes they would they were following it and just picking it up so your, your line would just kind of feel weird and slack and then you know you pull up and boom there would be a fish and i'll put a little clip in here to show that too so the direction is super important, the speed was super important, um, and I only caught them that one way, you know, no matter if I casted it, if I dragged the bait, it didn't matter what direction I did it, and if it wasn't against the current, they weren't biting it, so that, it just shows you how specific in the wintertime these fish can get, and they get that way in the summertime too sometimes, but in the wintertime it's even more, and the bite's definitely more challenging in the wintertime, so doing everything you can to increase it. And then the final like, little thing that I did to kind of trick them into biting and hanging on a little bit longer was using scent. And I feel like scent in the winter time actually goes a little bit longer because it gives you a split second more of them holding it in their mouth in the winter time to really get that good hook set into them. And it's all about getting that hook planted properly. So when you're trying to locate these guys in the river, you know, you're going to want to look through several miles and you're going to have to use your electronics heavily to do this and that's a really important thing that I don't want to forget to emphasize here is how important electronics is to this game in the winter time because you really have to find those those deeper holes that are protected that are slack because they may not necessarily be in the hole that day but they're going to be really close to wherever they winter. They might come up to a, a, a flat that's like five or eight feet deep from their 12 or 14 foot hole on a warmer day that's a little sunny searching around for some easy easy meals you know so they might move a little bit in the winter time but finding that winter hole and starting there is going to help increase all your chances at finding these things so guys i really hope this hope this helped you guys and if you got any questions uh leave a message get a hold of me and thanks for watching